We've got to take you back, though, to that devastating bus crash that took place in Tennessee, killing five young children just a few days before Thanksgiving. We have just learned from NTSB investigators the bus was not actually equipped with a black box, but there were working cameras, three cameras. Joining me now is Christopher Hart. He's a chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. No black box. Help us understand how this affects the investigation. We have good information sources. Uh, buses rarely have what you call black boxes, but they are increasingly having cameras, and this one had three cameras. So we are now seeing if we can download the information from those cameras. In addition, they have an engine control module, which is electronic and is non-volatile so that its information remains even after it loses power after the crash. What would be on those tapes? Well, the tapes would show there was a camera in the rear showing the inside of the bus pointing forward, a camera in the front showing the inside of the bus pointing rearward, and another camera over the driver's head pointing to the front door. So that would show us who came in, uh, would show us what happened uh, up to the accident, and it would also show us the evacuation. Though there's nothing official yet, when we look at that small suburban road and the massive damage done to that bus, basically wrapped around a giant tree, what does that tell you about the speed in which this bus was going? Road design is one of the issues we're looking at. We are also looking at speed, and that's why these several sources of information will be very helpful because we want to determine how fast was the bus going at the time it left the road. Who determines whether or not this bus driver is safe enough to drive these children? We know that there was already a minor accident just this semester, and several parents had been complaining, and it's only November. I want to share a bit of that. We will be, we will be looking at the... Uh, I've been calling complaining about this bus ride. Knew about that record. Also, we'll be looking at the training that occurred after he was hired. So we'll be, we'll be looking at the entire driver's history. Should there be seatbelts required in school buses? We have recommended a holistic approach for occupant protection. That's one of the reasons these cameras will be so helpful was to show us what happened inside, inside of the bus. We, uh, the, what most buses have is called compartmentalization, where it's padding in the seats that responds to fore and aft impact from front and rear, but does not respond to side collisions and rollovers. And that's why seat belts are so important, both lap belts and shoulder belts. So we're looking at the totality of protection of occupants on a school bus. If you haven't seen the camera footage yet and there wasn't a black box, what information uh, was gathered that would warrant the driver to be arrested so quickly and charged with vehicular homicide? We're not involved in the punitive aspects. You'd have to ask the Chattanooga Police Department about that. Our mission here is to determine what happened, make recommendations to try to prevent it from happening again so that we will never have to have a tragedy like this again. Without a doubt. Well, thank you so much for your work. We appreciate it. Well, thank, thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.